Hello, this is Ted McLeod. This is part two of the uh, events, uh, JavaFX events demo. And uh, in the first event uh, demo, we made a program that uh, when we run it, the slider doesn't do anything, uh, but the buttons do. So uh, we're going to improve that situation by making the slider actually do something. Uh, so what our plan is, is the slider will change circle one's radius to whatever the slider value is. And we're also going to add a listener that will listen for whenever the radius changes in circle one for any reason. It's going to change circle two's radius to the maximum slider value minus that. And it will also update the text um, accordingly. So that way, circle one and circle two and the slider are all kind of uh, dependent on each other. Or at least uh, circle one and the slider are dependent on each other. Uh, and circle two is dependent on circle one. So the way we can do that is in a slider, instead of adding a listener or a, uh, uh, instead of adding an event listener for the slider, you actually listen uh, for changes in the value. So to do that, if we go look at the API for slider, it has, um, and you may have noticed this on all the nodes, they have all these, uh, double property, integer property, so they have all these properties. And notice those correspond to values that you have been setting. Um, so, but they're different than, you know, there's uh, get max, and then up here, there's the property max. So the difference here is uh, double property is a class that holds a value and it also holds uh, listeners that will be informed when the value changes. Uh, so if you look at the value property, uh, that is a double property, um, which just means that the value is a double. Uh, and notice all these implemented uh, interfaces. Um, the key one that we're interested in here is that it's a observable value. Um, and so if we click on observable value, you can see observable value uh, has a parameter, which you looked back, you saw that it was number. Um, so back here it was observable value number. That means that uh, the class that it's dealing with is uh, number. Uh, and if you look down here, the methods that it has is... Uh, it has add listener and remove listener and add listener uh, adds a class that must uh, implement the change listener interface uh, where it's expecting uh, the thing that's being changed to be of type T where T is something. So if we look back here, uh, in this case, uh, that T has to be either this T uh, or a superclass of this T. In other words, we can only guarantee that it's um, at least this T, which if you go back one more step, was number. So essentially, it has to either be number or a superclass of number. Uh, and there only is one superclass of number, which is object. Um, all right, so uh, this is the interface that we need to implement in our change listener, right? Um, so if we implement this interface and have this changed uh, method, then anytime uh, the value changes, uh, it will call this changed method in our class, and we can do what we need to do when it changes. Uh, all right, so going back here, uh, 
our plan then is to uh, <coughs> call slider dot uh, and then the property right so value property uh, and then dot add listener and notice again this takes a change listener uh, where it's going to accept changes uh, to a number uh, so this is the thing that we need to now implement or uh, create a class for so let's go down here and we can say private class change listener uh, oh so holy smokes can't call it change listener uh, slider listener because it implements change listener uh, and in particular it implements change listener where the thing being changed is a number uh, and so let's import that and as soon as we import that then it knows now we need to implement the changed method and we are in business uh, uh, I hate when it says arg0, this should be observable. Usually it fills it in, but, uh, and then arg1 is old value, and arg2, you can see, is should have been new value. I'm not really sure why it does that sometimes. Okay, so in our slider listener, we need to take circle1 and set radius to whatever the new value is and that's it um, except there is this little problem that we're sending it a number but set radius takes a double well luckily we know that the value in a slider is a double so we actually know that this number uh, is in fact a double uh, which then gets auto boxed to the primitive value double uh, so we can either write it like that and let the auto boxing happen there or write it like this and let the auto boxing happen when you typecast it so either way it ends up being a double primitive okay which is what we wanted Let's go up here and uh, finish up our listener. So uh, we said the slider is going to have a new listener. That's going to now be a new slider listener. All right, so if we run that. <coughs> Hooray, as I slide, the circle changes. So our next goal uh, is to make the... Uh, Changes in circle one also change circle two and the text. Um, and while we're at it, we'll also make it change the slider if it wasn't the slider that changed it. Um, although we won't actually have to have that if in there, as, as you'll see in a second. Um, okay, so to do that, it's going to be a very similar process. You, in fact, can probably take you can take that class and just copy paste it. Uh, and just change this to radius listener uh, and it's going to be the same kind of listener because uh, if we were to look at a circle uh, class in Java FX uh, you will see that it has properties including a radius property and it's also a double property same kind of property so uh, we can say when the radius changes, uh, let's set circle two to whatever the sliders uh, max was. So get max minus the uh, new value, the new radius of circle one. Uh, and then we're also going to uh, make the slider have set value to uh, the new value uh, as a double again so let's typecast it again 
Uh, and you might be wondering, okay, wait a minute though, won't slider one get its value set, which then sets off this changed, which sets circle one, which then sets off this one, which changes the slider. Oh my gosh, it's going to go back and forth. Uh, no, luckily uh, is smart enough that changed only actually gets called if the value actually changed, uh, not just because the setter got called. Um, so that's kind of nice. So once they're both the same value, it will uh, resolve and not go back and forth. Okay, so that's actually safe to do. Uh, and we're also going to update the text. So txt dot set text in order to set the text of that text object. Uh, and if you go up here, originally we set the text in the constructor. We're going to remove that. Uh, and this is right here where we're going to set the text and it will be to that same thing. Uh, all right, so we now have a radius listener. Uh, and we can just go up here and add that radius listener, where is it, to circle one. So uh, let's go ahead and just add it right up here circle one dot set uh, sorry circle one dot radius property right and that's the thing that we're going to watch right so the actual property so add listener so new radius listener so every time the radius changes that's our class that will then update the other uh, objects okay so we've added this listener. Um, we better make sure uh, that when we actually set the radius, uh, these things exist so we don't get null pointer exceptions. Um, so easiest thing to do, I think, would be to just, because um, we no longer need to set the radius in the constructor, because instead at the very end here, we're going to say, uh, circle one dot set radius two uh, and let's even make it be a calculation so whatever the slider get max is we will set it to half of that so that it will be kind of in the middle all right uh, and at this point when it calls set radius it will then also go down here and change all of circle two and the slider and the text so that means that we no longer have to initialize circle two's radius we no longer uh, we already got rid of initializing the text uh, but we also no longer even need to initialize the slider we can totally get rid of that too um, because automatically when we set circle one uh, the radius of circle one, everything else will get updated because that's what our listener does. All right, so if we run that, uh, yay, if we slide this around as circle one gets bigger, circle two gets smaller and so forth. Uh, and then if we hit reset back to normal. Uh, so what's nice uh, about having these change listeners is you can uh, link values uh, independent of which control is uh, or what means uh, you're changing the value by. Um, all right, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, events demo and you're ready to go off and make a cool UI that has uh, interactivity.